In this video, we install these three Lenovo tablets, one of them right here, as Home Assistant dashboards. So Lenovo has very kindly sent me these three P11 tablets. Actually, they look like this. And one of them is going to be right here-ish <laughs> as a Home Assistant dashboard. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, Home Assistant is great and I have it on my phone and I use it on my computer. But the rest of the family, hmm, maybe they actually just want to turn on the light. Uh, from where they are. So a Home Assistant dashboard is basically a customized dashboard that sits, sits just here and on a tablet or there, probably there, I haven't quite decided yet, as a, um, a web page in kiosk mode. And that allows them to use a customized, customized view of Home Assistant in a specific part of the house. Hence, there are three of them. So I'm gonna have one here, which is in my office. I'm gonna have one in our media room. And then I'm gonna have one in the kitchen area. And all of them will have specific features to where they are in the house, but more on that later. First thing though, is that I need to get my electrician to install some uh, in-wall recessed power points so that these can sit flush on the wall. Right, so the power points have been installed, which means that we can move on to the next step, which is mounting the tablets. So we've seen the tablets. I've got them here. There's three of these Lenovo P11s. Uh, they're very thin. I, I like the profile a lot. That's why I chose them. Um, but of course, we can't just sticky tape this to the wall. We need a mount. And that's what this is. So I found a website called Smart Home Mount. And I bought three of these mounts, obviously three, one for each, and I'll show you, they're quite clever. So these are from a company called smarthomemount.com, and they are 3D printed. Yeah, so they were reasonably cheap, I think I paid about $40 US per mount. Uh, they're obviously plastic, or they're 3D printed from plastic, or polymer, or whatever it's called. Um, and they just come like this. So it comes with a little greeting saying, thank you for being our customer, which is nice. Uh, it comes with some screws for mounting it if you need that. And then of course it comes with the bracket itself. This is in two pieces. So you mount this bit to the wall. So that's gonna go over the PowerPoint, hence the hole there that goes into the wall, right? Um, and then you simply put this in. Now, the, the key to this, to making it sit flush, uh, is the power, because you want to sort of hide it a bit, because power cords are ugly. So it comes with this special USB-C to USB power cable. And you can see how flat it is, completely flat. And it has a 90 degree USB-C plug on it. So that goes into uh, here, whoops, <laughs> into here, um, like that. And you can see it's as low a profile as you can get. It almost doesn't stick out. And then what you do is that you then mount it on the on the on this mount here. You can see that it has a groove here for the power cord, so it fits in there. And then stick it in here. Come on. Oh, almost. I forgot to take the USB out. Eh. Yep. I haven't done this before. <laughs> there we go. Take USB out. And then it sits flush with the case. There's nothing that sticks out. And the power cord comes out here and you stick that obviously into the recessed power point. And then you just put the bracket over it. And look at that. Look how neat that looks like that. So it's only gonna stick out that much from the wall. Uh, it's not gonna sit in the wall because that would be an awful, awful lot of effort. So it's gonna sit just on the wall, but you won't be able to see the PowerPoint and it will just sit there and, and look delicious. Yeah, anyway, 
Um, so let's install those three, one here in the office, one in the kitchen and one in the media room, and then we'll go and make some custom dashboards in Home Assistant. All right, let's install this onto here with a bit of drilling and screws. All right, so I've um, got some old Nokia power bricks actually. The reason I use these is, well, I like Nokia, but there's a USB on the side, which means they go in here. Now, I probably could have got a recessed PowerPoint that had USB in it, but I couldn't find one that I liked that sort of fitted the style and what I was after. So this is my solution. It's not the only one, but this fits in nicely on the side here. So I'm gonna use these. Um, I should have put this in before I put it in. Good, that sits there. So now we can route the USB it needs to sit out here, right? So obviously we want to try and not crimp the cable or we'll squeeze it in. So like that will sit beautifully. So let's get, make sure we turn the power on. Um, and then here, we should be pointed the right way. We can then attach the USB-C there and put it in. And that looks pretty good. Yep. And there we go. And you can see it's even got a power icon, so it's actually powering on. 61% power. Yay, so let's just get that in properly. Yeah, that sits pretty good there. And then of course, the outer bracket as well, so that we don't doesn't fall out. And it'll hide the USB-C beautifully as well. Come on, it's a good fit, so. There we go. And there's access here to the power point, so yeah, I can actually turn it on now. See? There we go. Zzz. There we go. Lenovo! Yay! So that turns on as well, beautifully. Um, yeah, you might have noticed that I took the drill out again. I just messed up one of the holes for positioning, uh, but all good, we're in there now. So I'll go and install the other two, I'll show you those, and then we'll do some dashboards. So this is probably a good time to talk a little bit more about the Lenovo Tab P11 because it's a really neat tablet. So let me just show you what's in the box and some of the specs about it. So it's a 11 inch tablet, hence the name P11, and it comes in this really neat little packaging here. Straight up, so there is the uh, device. It's in slate gray is the, the name of this color. We'll just take it out here. And some of the specs, and I'm just gonna read them off the box here, is that this is, uh, it has 2000 by 1200 uh, pixel resolution. It's a uh, 802.11 A, B, G, N, and A, C wireless. Uh, so it's not Wi-Fi 6 as far as I can figure out, because that's AX. And it runs uh, Android 10, but that can be upgraded as far as I'm aware. And it has a 7700 milliamp hour battery. So pretty beefy battery, but it's gonna be powered in the whole time for me anyway. So that's not a big concern. Um, and this particular model that I've got is the 4G with 64 gigabytes of memory or uh, hard drive rather. Um, so four gigabyte RAM, I'm guessing, or is it 4G connectivity? I'm not sure actually. Um, no, it's 4G connectivity because there's a SIM card slot here. So that's neat. So you can put a 4G SIM card in it. Very cool. So before we get to the tablet, the box has a charger, which is uh, needed for these because you got to charge them, obviously. Just USB-C, any USB-C will charge this, um, which is really handy for traveling. Everything just works with USB-C. And the other side here, we have a SIM card take outera. That's the official term. And of course, there is some literature about what the device is, and I think that's it for this. Yep. And this middle bit has nothing in it. It's just cardboard. Rip. All right, so the device itself, 
is weighs about 800 grams so that's a different number in imperial and it is um, all screen pretty much there's a little bit of a um, uh, bezel around it uh, when you turn it on uh, up here you have the sim card there's the up and down volume and on the side here there's the USB-C on the bottom there is um, the keyboard mounting so if you have a Lenovo keyboard that will click onto there and is the power button on the side and there's a camera now I actually don't know what the camera is how good it is because I never take photos with a tablet and neither should you so there all right so that's it that's 11 inch of goodness from Lenovo the P11 tab P11 so let's mount this last one as a wall mounted home assistant dashboard and then and then we'll go and create some custom dashboards. Yeah. So let's finally create some dashboards. Well, I've kind of cheated a little bit because I've already created a couple, um, but we start by doing something else first. Yes, I know. But go to your settings and home assistant and then under people and then users, we're going to create a user just for the dashboards because I like having that separate so that they're not admin, etc. So I'm going to call this user dashboard, very original. And the username is going to be dashboard and then we're going to give it a password like so. I'm going to make these only log in for the local network because they are all going to be on the farm on the local network and they are not going to be an administrator. So that's the same user I'm going to use for all three dashboards. So with that in mind, now we can create some dashboards. So if you go in under settings again, there is a whole menu just called dashboards. And I have already created two of them because I've figured you don't want to look at me creating three dashboards. And I need to practice. Um, so I've created a kitchen dashboard, dashboard and a media room dashboard. So now we're going to create the one for here for the office. Create a dashboard here and then give it a title and we're going to call this one office. We can give it an icon and if I search for office, you know, just to, the icon doesn't do anything as such, it just shows up in Home Assistant. Uh, I'm going to go with an office chair why not and then there's a url for the dashboard dash office or for the office dashboard which is dashboard dash office and we're going to need that later on and then we have show in sidebar and admin only so we don't want to have an admin only because obviously we just made a user that's not administrator and i don't want it to show up in the sidebar i don't need to get to it all the time i just need to be on each of the dashboards so create that and you see that just comes up here shows up and then we can open it and as you'll see shortly, once it opens, is that by default, Home Assistant, and I'm not sure why, but Home Assistant creates a dashboard for you that has every single entity that you have is in here. This is enormous, look at this. Scroll, 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 scroll. Everything is in here. And I don't know who would ever want that. Like, I don't know. But as soon as you click edit dashboard, it goes, huh. Do you want to take control of this dashboard because it's auto updated with everything and you can just say start with an empty dashboard because initially i went ha oh, do i have to delete all of it but no you don't and you just click take control and we have an empty dashboard so there's a couple of things that i want to do first up one of them is that um i need this to run in kiosk mode right so kiosk mode being that you can't just go up and start another app on the on the tablet that I'm using, the Android tablets. Uh, it'll run Home Assistant all the time. And part of that is making sure that Home Assistant itself doesn't expose things you can click on and change. Now that's not a huge issue on the farm here, but it might be if you had a business or something. So one of the ways you can do that is that you can you know, go to Hacks here, which is Home Assistant Community Store. There's a whole front end section here now the one i'm using for kiosk mode is called can you guess it yes kiosk mode right which is here so install that if you're not familiar with hacks and how to install things uh look it up <laughs> i'm not going to go through it here but this kiosk mode um 
integration or, or, or front end integration really it's not an integration it's a is an add-on to your front end uh, has all the details here on how to install it etc and all the different um, configurations so I'm going to use that to hide the chrome the sidebar and the header right that makes sense so first off you can edit the raw configuration of um, of this and there's nothing in here obviously yet and just right at the top here I'm just gonna copy this across all right, so this is kiosk mode and very conveniently there is an admin settings part of it so if i'm logged in as an admin i don't want to hide things because i can't get to anything all right if i hide the uh, header and the sidebar i can't get out of the dashboard when i'm on it so i don't want that to happen but when i'm not an admin as in the user we created before i do want to hide it so start with that and that makes it uh, easier to test as well if you have it on your tablet next to you or whatever so we'll save that and then I'm gonna go back to the visual editor all right and now I'm gonna add a bunch of things that I think are necessary for the office obviously this is all gonna be different from you for your location right? it, it'll be in context to what your location requires so I got a whole list of them here well it's not that many so first of all I want to add a, uh, a camera feed which is going to be, oh, where is it? Picture entity here. And I want to add my camera feed from my gate so I can see if someone's there, as in needs to be let in. So here I'm going to go gate camera. No, nope. it's called gate high because unify. And I'm going to call this just gate. And then I'm going to put it on live because I want it to update as, as regular as possible. And that's fine because I'm on the local network. I'm not going to use any data on it. And it turns out that live, at least in my case, is about every five seconds live. If you can get live feed into this through the RTSP protocol, let me know because I can only get it five. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to not show name and I'm not going to show the state because I don't need to to have that on there I'm gonna save that I'm then gonna add another one because I want to see the intercom as well okay intercom high and again I want to call it live actually I'm gonna call this intercom and I don't want to show its name or state and save that all right you get the picture I'm gonna add a button which in this case is not gonna be for lights it's gonna be for my gate so that if someone is at the gate, I can just press on the dashboard. Gate switch. Like that, I want to give it a different icon, being a gate. And we're just going to call this gate, because we don't need anything else. And that's it. Now, you can see the trend here. The whole idea with the dashboard is, if you're on your phone, and you open up Home Assistant, right? And then you have your finger and it's really easy and it's all very very tiny all of it is very small as you can see right if i go to the lights uh, like this here all of it is very small not so much on a dashboard where you just want to tap on things like you want the targets <laughs> to be relatively large hence i'm choosing quite large cards here like the gate is going to be a huge button just go and click right because i just want to be able to not have it to go and you know possibly hit the wrong thing so that's why i'm going for these larger cards here all right so with that in mind i'm going to have another card here for the lights and i'm going to have one here which is just going to be cottage lights uh, which is literally outside of the office and That'll be it. I don't have to do anything else for this. Just save that. And then I can turn them on and off as well easily with one press. And obviously this cottage light is a group of lights. So if you're not familiar with that, in your configuration, you can set up groups of lights that act as a single entity. And you can then turn them all on or off or you know dim or, or, or undim, dim up and down, whatever it's called, uh, all of them at one time. So I'll have those lights. And then I'm going to want some temperatures. And again, this is just something that I'm reading. So uh, in this case, it's probably all right with just having an entity card with lots of entities on it. Um, so we have those. Again, large cards, right? But well, we're going to get to a bit of the layout in just a minute. And I'm going to add a card for the thermostat. And again, once I've added another one, so the thermostat that comes with Home Assistant. Is this one here now that's fine if you like using that that's okay I find the whole circular thing a bit fiddly so instead 
I have got the um, simple thermostat, which is again through hacks. And I'll, I'll put all these links at the bottom of uh, in the description of the video as well, so you can go and check them out. But this thing, I want to have, have the guest cottage climate. And there it is. So this is much neater, I think. And you get much easier buttons to press and an up down here for the temperature. So I just want the guest cottage. I don't need to change any of this uh, actually either. So I've got the guest cottage here, which is next door. So I can turn um, the temperature up and down or whatever I need to do if someone's coming to visit. And then of course, I want to put my heater in here. So I have a heater behind me, which is also in Home Assistant with just a switch. So that's going to be a big button here. And there we go. Heater socket. Okay, right. Fair enough. It's, it's turned off currently, otherwise it's noisy. Um, so that's fine. We're going to keep that. Yep, that's all good. Chill state. That's fine. And the icon, obviously, if it's turned on, the, the home assistant will change the icon to show it's turned on because it's a switch or a socket. Um, so we have that. And then finally, I just want to know how much water is in the tank here. So I want to put a gauge on it. And I don't want this, I want the wool shed tank, which is there, liters. And then obviously we need to put in um, the minimum maximum because otherwise the gauge doesn't work. And this one holds uh, 43,000 liters, give or take. Um, and that's it. There we go. So now I have a dashboard. Um, so there's one more thing I want to show you. And again, dashboards is a very personal thing. I am not very good at setting these up so they look nice. They're functional, but I don't have an eye for design as such. So if you're great at design, let me know what I can fix to make these look better. But one thing I do want to do is that if you go up here and you hit the little pen next to it, I have in I have um, added a uh, another hacks add-on or in, in, um, front end integration called grid layout or layout card. And if I'd use that, for example, here, I can go to masonry, which is similar to home assistant, or I can use horizontal vertical grid, click on the link at the bottom of the, in the description to figure out what they all are. But I can change the width here. So I have a layout and then I can say width. And there's, there's a, quite a few um, parameters or, or properties you can add to this. So lit width 400, that's per column. And I save that. I don't know if you saw it, but it's just ever so slightly adjusted. So now each column is 400 wide. And it means that when you have it on a tablet, for example, so not the screen you're looking at now, it will adjust better. And you can fiddle with this till you cows come home because there's so many things you can do with the layout. I just like adding that because it just tightened things up. Okay, I think that's it. Um, I have now created a dashboard. I've added a user that can then access that dashboard. So now let's go and put it on the tablet just out here that we installed before. And we should see the dashboard. And I'll show you the other dashboards as well that I've created. And then um, I'll take questions in the comments. Mm, all right. All right, so here's the office dashboard. And we're gonna put the dashboard we just built, we're gonna put that on here. Uh, but there's a few things I wanna do, or at least tell you about. So. I want this to be in kiosk mode, meaning that you can't go into other apps, etc. so that, you know, say my son decides to want to play a game on it, he can't, right? And the way that you do that, there's, there's two ways in general. There is the corporate way where you uh, buy an app and you can manage it, and especially if you have multiple devices. I, I have three dashboards, but still. And you can manage this kiosk feature through an app that does things. Or you can use what Android calls app pinning. Um, so what you do is you go into your security um, settings for the tablet and you enable app pinning, which basically means you can pin an app to always be running or be at the front of the tablet experience. And if you want to exit the, uh, that app, you have to enter a pin code. Good enough for me. So, but if you want to do it somewhere else, some other way, then that's fine too. And then the second thing is that I want the display here to always be on. Or at least, if you don't want to always be on, double tap to get it up and running. I don't want to have to enter a pin code every time I want to use it. Uh, I want this to be basically a dashboard, but only running the one thing. Make sense? So I've set that up here uh, now. So let's get the dashboard on here and uh, see what happens. So I'm going to open up Chrome. 
like so and then I need to put in the new user obviously that we just made so this is the username was dashboard and then the password and log in and then initially that will log in to the uh, our dash, our, uh, default dashboard, right? So I need to change that. So I go into dashboard dash <laughs> office, like so, right? So now you can see there's no Chrome on here, so it's in kiosk mode. However, we still have the Chrome experience, so we need to pin the app. So the way you do that is that up in the uh, uh, menu here for Chrome or whatever browser you're using, I'm going to add this to the home screen and I'm just going to call it assistant. That's fine. There we go and add that automatically. So now I have a shortcut to this. And then when I've added it to the dashboard of the tablet, <laughs> the dashboard to anyway, when I've added it on the home screen, of the Android tablet. I can then close this Chrome window and then it's right here, Assistant. I open that. That comes up as a full screen experience without all the Chrome on it, Chrome of the Chrome. And then here I can then press the little square button which opens up and shows you all the apps that are running. Hold on your finger on that and I can then pin that app. So now, and then it says here, screen's pinned. This keeps it in view until you unpin, touch and hold back and overview to unpin. Oh, it's called overview, we see all the apps. So I say, got it. So now there's, there's no way for me to get out of this. Like on all of these buttons down here, or well, I can go back, which is not ideal because it doesn't go anywhere. But anyway, don't go back. <laughs> Again, it's not perfect, but it's good enough for what I'm doing. And you have to unpin the pinned app. You hold down square and back or overview and back. It goes to the login screen. And in this case, I can then lock back in. Screen is now unpinned and then I can just fix what it is that I made a boo-boo with, right? And then there's a little bit of a bug, I think, in Home Assistant. I don't know if it's a bug, but when you go back into it, it goes back to the overview. So if you want to find your dashboard again, go down to Dashboards, and then go down here. It says Dashboard Overview is default, and then choose the one you want, which is Office. Oh, so pick a default dashboard for this device. So we go to Overview, and then it goes back. Yeah, right, so we picked it. For this device, we picked the default dashboard, which is home office. Does that make sense? So you got to pick that as well. Yes, clear as mud. <laughs> but now I have this. Now, is it pinned? Nope, not yet. So we want to pin this again. So there's a few steps in getting it to do what you want. So just to recap, in your security settings on your Android tablet, you need to have app pinning enabled. Uh, you possibly want the screen to never uh, shut off depending on what your criteria is. You then need to go to the dashboard that you want to pin to the tablet and then make that an app. You, know, you add it to the home screen of the Android tablet and then you can open it as an app, as an app icon, which then means you can then pin that app to the tablet, which means you can't get out of it without a pin code. That makes sense? So those are the steps that I have made in order to have a tablet experience here that can't be fiddled with. I'm sure there's a way around it, but in general, you can't accidentally sort of just exit stuff and start playing games, etc. right? There's uh, some effort required. So I think that makes sense. Now, let me just show you. So here's this dashboard, right? You can see it fits nicely, big buttons to hit and see and whatever. Let me just show you the other two dashboards I made because there's a couple of really cool details on those as well. This is the kitchen dashboard and it's almost the same, but not quite. So I still have the gate cameras and um, button on here because that's important. We need to be able to open that for whoever's coming in. But then I have um, the temperatures are for this part of the farm. So it's the kitchen and the, the bedrooms. I have the house tank sensor. I have a forecast because we often look at the forecast. Actually, the, there's also another weather station just beneath it here. And then I have rain events. So whatever it is that over time we might want to put on, we spend a fair amount of time in the kitchen as most people do. Um, so this might get a whole bunch of other um, functions, features, triggers, toggles, buttons, whatever it is that we think um, we need. But the kitchen one is also here. And yeah, let's look at the media room. And there's a couple of kind of cool cards on that one. And then finally the media room, which obviously is this dashboard here. 
Now that also has the gate as the other two does, but again, it's important because we need to be able to get to it. But this also has a simple thermostat. So that's for this aircon that's just here for the media room. But the really cool things that I do like are these light switches here. So for example, the media room lights, the dining room table lights, they are, well, the dining room or dining table is that chandelier behind me and they are dimmable. And then you can use this to dim them. See, how cool is that? We can dim a bit more, which means that this is a multi-function button, but it's big, so it works for a dashboard, right? So like that, or I can just turn them off as well or turn them on and they work the same way these, you can just turn them on or off, the ones that aren't dimmable. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed doing this dashboard. It's a nice upgrade to the whole farm automation, smart home type of system. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please do consider subscribing. If you have any comments, and I'm sure you do for this particular video, because there's many opinions on how to do this, put them below in the comments and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Uh oh, I'm stuck.